Welcome back. Today we are with Jason here talking about the best IoT product on the market, the Pocket Beagle. Welcome back, Jason. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, if in case you don't know, of course you should, but if you don't know, Jason Kreidner here is a co-founder of uh, uh, Beagleboard.org. Beagleboard.org. And you've been there from like... The very the, beginning. From, from the very beginning. So here's the, the godfather right here in a way. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has has a lot of ideas and inspiration for, for the org. And we were fortunate enough to be able to work with the org since they are local here uh, in the Detroit area. And uh, we've been working on a lot of ideas. And uh, we're very excited to be part of this org amazing organization. Well, we've, we've, we've been really making some fantastic products together. I'm really excited about how quickly we were able to work with each other um, to bring the Pocket Beagle to market. Um, I think we actually got started on this only about uh, six to eight weeks, I think, before it actually launched. We actually started working together on this project. Um, and now, of course, I'm excited to be back uh, back in Michigan. Just got back from the Open Hardware Summit and, and talking about some of the next things that we're going to be doing together as well. Great, great. So today's talk is about the amazing all amazing pocket beagle this tiny thing it's I, I love this this is by far my favorite product out there it's uh, I, I think the size is just phenomenal and the price is just just perfect yeah I think people that have been around the the, the beagle bone community for a while kind of know about my um, obsession as it is against uh, the the mint tins and so there was kind of a joke early in, in beagle life uh, that uh, we were going to to put it into the you know I, I told uh, I told Gerald I wanted it in a tin that, that that fit this big and the big joke was you know it's like oh you're gonna stick it in here and, <laughs> and this was a joke for you it was a, it was a joke and um, and now it's been made possible we've actually done it so. <laughs> yeah and it's even uh, I think you can even fit it in with an SD card right yeah absolutely yeah perfect micro SD card. So yeah, it fits. It fits. I mean, and as little also it can. And, and still room, room for a ton of IOs. Um, still at you know 100 mil, 10th inch centers, right? So you can use you know standard breadboarding types of prototyping solutions, and um, and like we have 44 digital IOs on this, um, plus eight analog inputs. So there's a whole lot of expansion still in that tiny space. Perfect. Now. Now, uh, I've heard these from a few people at the fair when we, uh, when we introduced it at New York Maker Fair, and I, you probably heard similar things, is like this is, where, where is networking? Where is HDMI right, on right, there? Right. And, I, and I keep saying, saying that this is meant for IoT. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not meant to plug into a monitor. It's a thing right. that goes into a quadcopter. It's tiny, it's and, small. And it was very, yeah, very much about stripping off all the stuff that you didn't want because even though like Ethernet or Wi-Fi are really great um, for doing your, your prototyping and development in-house, you're going to want to probably use uh, long-range RF or even cellular modems or stuff when you go into to the field. Um, and we didn't want to burden the design with that, right? So we made it possible to really add those things um, on separately. Of course, you get the, the USB networking for your development um, by default. Um, and you, you can use it either as client or host. You can actually connect up the USB modems and do things like that. But by stripping all that stuff off, we really empower the users to create um, the most flexible solution for their problems as they can. Yeah, yeah. So, so the way I see it, this is like a single board computer. It's Linux, one gigahertz. You get everything you want as a core. And then from there, the possibilities are endless. You want connect networking? Connect networking. You want Wi-Fi? Go with Wi-Fi. If you don't want any of this, you need some long range. Um, uh, wireless technology because you're doing it in a quadcopter, fantastic. If you're building a 3D printer, why do you even need networking? Uh, maybe you do, but in most cases, why do you even need networking on, on a 3D printer? This is where this fits all that. Now, there is one thing that a lot of um, community um, and people around the, the maker community uh, forget that it's it's not just the clock frequency and it's running Linux. There is one very very important piece in everything uh, Beagle that sometimes it's overlooked. It's the uh, the the PRUs, the uh, programmable real time units, which is two. 200 megahertz, 32-bit microcontrollers living in there, and they are perfect for timing. So like stepper motors, quadcopters, right? Like what right. do you see so these you, are being used? Right, because this is like really the perfect combination of both the, the single board computer 
as well as the microcontrollers all onto one board. Because a lot of times you'll see people, if they want to make something, they have to combine them in order to have the low level timing as well as the high level operating system, high level language stuff. And these are all combined right there in one. So it, it, exactly the types of applications you're talking about where real time is necessary, like controlling stepper motors for CNC mills or 3D printers or um, controlling things like quadcopters and, and drones and mobile robots. So those are all applications that we see people use. We also see some really interesting ones where you want very precise timings to generate um, LED control systems of all things, right? So building jumbotrons, um, I think that's a name brand, but the, you, know, you know the idea, right? These big LED matrices, it allows you to generate the timing controls for that. And that shared memory interface, you can have just you dump the, the, the video data right into a location of memory, and those PRUs go and grab it and start feeding out the, the bit pattern. So it's really a great combination all into one device. You can even simulate CAN. You could. It's, yeah, but you CAN could. bus, if you know what CAN bus, which uh, uh, there's a tech talk coming on, on CAN bus. This is one I completely forgot about. If you know how complex CAN is and understand that you can simulate this in the PRU, you will quickly see how much power there is in these right. PRUs. There's just no way you can do this with any operating system, Linux or anything else. Right. Operating right. systems are not meant to do hard real-time uh, tasks. Right, and if the nine pulse width hardware pulse width modulators on the, the SOC aren't enough for you, add another 25 with PRUs. Um, yeah. You know, we have, uh, I think there's six or seven UARTs built into the SOC. Not enough for you, add more UARTs with PRUs. Yes. Yep, yeah. So it's all possible. So there's a simple simple example that I can I can think of right now. Like, I, we want to keep it simple. But they just understand what the P, what you can do with the PRUs. Let's say you got a uh, one of those, like, RC controllers, and it's just basically a pulse output on the receiving end just like the servo motor. So just the poles that, that show where the, the knob is as far as the transmitter, those are like really easily available at any, any hobby shop. And that's what you're using to drive your, let's say quadcopter or, or a robot, whatever you're driving. Right. Now to, to use Linux to read those pulses, that becomes very, very hard, like near impossible. You need to get into the kernel, you have to write some really complex code to make that happen with PRUs. You strip Done. it all away, and you, you code exactly Done. what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, from the PRU's perspective, and from, for, to Linux, it's just a number that come from the PRU. The knob is like 10%, 20%. Yeah, there's even some extra hardware peripherals sitting around the microcontrollers themselves to do things exactly like doing um, um, you know, capture, right, where you're doing pulse width measurement and stuff. There's, there's um, shifting and unshifting for doing you know, um, you know, parallel to serial conversions. Hey, there's, there's a lot of stuff in there, but yeah, by stripping it all down, um, just to the microcontroller, you don't have to worry about integration with the operating system. Yes, this is amazing. <laughs> now, uh, so with, with PRUs, the, the possibilities are really endless there. So um, another thing that I, that, I, that I heard, like some comments on, and we actually talked about this, is like headers. Why you guys decided not to put headers on the board? And if I put headers, should I put them on top, on the bottom? This, this is personally, this is how I see it. And I know Jason is working with the community on, and he, uh, you give us some feedback on what you think. But to me personally, personally, at $25, you need to get one of these for each one of your projects. Why you wanna take it out? Mm -hmm. There's no reason to go mm -hmm. and get one and you take it from one to another and break the wires and break the headers and break the, your, your shield or hat or cape or whatever you're using. Why not just take one of these at 25 bucks, put it in your quadcopter or whatever something amazing you're building and let it live there at, at that price. And but then working with community, what's Well, uh, something good we did together was we didn't put any bottom side components. So if you actually wanted to just run this through a, a reflow oven or something like that, you could actually solder this down directly to your other board. You don't even have to use. Oh, that's a great meters. idea. So let me get it out here. Yeah. So, so, I, so with, no, with no components on the back, of the uh, of the board, you can make a board with the, the same pad the pattern, same pattern, and it just, and just sits on top, and, and then it solders right on there. You could absolutely so, do that. So the idea of this is a single board computer is is true. I mean, it's it is a single board computer, and you can just solder this right on your circuit, or you can ha you don't need to reflow it. You can just solder it with. You could just solder it. You can you can. Th th that's what the that flexibility that we really try to provide with the, the way we did this, right? So you really prototype with it the way that you'd like to prototype. Okay. Now, around the around the uh, 
Pocket Beagle, what, what should we expect in the future? I know there's like capes for the, for the big sister, but then for the Pocket Beagle, what, what's, what, are, what is the future plan and, for that? Well, first to start with, this, and this was, this was your idea, right? Um, was there's already a library of over 300 different boards that you can add to Pocket Beagle. Um, you know, some of the software is still coming out for that, but by making it compatible with the, the, the microbus, uh, click header format, right? There's actually 300 boards that you can go and get started with adding those on um, to the to the Pocket Beagle today, right? So those um, essentially slide slide it on top. Oh, and, perfect! Um, and uh, the and actually, it's two of them. It's two so of them. That's exactly right. So you can actually put two of these on here and solder those yeah. down. Um, and what did I just create here? So I created a, a BLE to Wi-Fi gateway um, right there, right? So all the different types of things that you might want to, there's a huge library of, of starting points um, already. So the, the, the pinouts are made compatible, yes. and of course now all the, the, the software and stuff can be developed. Yeah, so those, those are the, the uh, by a company made Microelectronica, they're in Europe, and they make these click modules. Uh, they, they, the bus is called Micro, Microbus, correct? Microbus. So there's a microbus that's a standard, and then these click boards that just basically they just click in. And there are the pinout for two of these click boards is already compatible. Like the pinout, you know, use it for something else, go for it. But if one of the clicks, and there's over 300 of them, is, if one of these work for you, you can just add some LEDs. Something mm -hmm. can be as, as simple as LED. Let's say you are really advanced when it comes to Linux and you want to see the boot up messages and get right into the kernel mm -hmm. and, and, the and, and rebuild and the kernel. So this is, this is already wired to, to the uh, to come zero or one, the, the, yeah. the, the boot U, com. USB zero. USB yeah, maybe, sorry, zero. You, are, you are zero. You are zero. So you, you, you get in a USB to serial. This has an FTDI chip, if you know what that is, on the click. And you put this on, and then you would see all the boot up messages, and you get right into you can actually even, into You could even even boot software directly over the UART. So if you wanted to, um, you know, it uses, a, I think it's either X modem or Y modem. You could actually send code over that <laughs> um, and so, power the whole So I can plug, well. I can just put this in here, connect this to a PC with a serial, with a like, ter terminal software, any terminal software, running any operating system, it's just a serial port. Exactly. And I can start getting into Linux and start writing codes and running scripts and yep, doing you whatever. You can directly talk to the ROM, or if you want to see the low-level boot messages from the, both the bootloader and the kernel, um, that's all going to be available there, so you just be able to start working with it that way. Um, but then, when you want to put this in projects, um, when, you, when you've finished kind of your design, you want to put it into one thing here or there, you're not going to have to be burdened with that being in your hardware, right? So you just do that in your one development system, then use another one. You pop the SD card out and put it into the, the other system, and everything's all debugged and ready to go. Terrific, terrific. And then speaking of projects, these are a couple projects that were uh, at, uh, at New York Maker Faire. And uh, I don't know how, but these happened like two days. They're <laughs> like they're, well, they're, they're, they're put, put together. I think it was a, a two weeks, right? Just waiting for a quick PCB turns, right? So they were done like these super quick, like wiring diagrams is essentially done in, in, in fritzing and then, um, you know, assembled uh, just, just by loose wires. Um, then, yeah. then, then click on uh, build the PCB and, you know, th that turned into that PCB in the back. And, nice. and connect it up there. Now we have a, um, a video game or arcade machine. Perfect, perfect. So, so we, and it's then there's a 3D printed enclosure around it as well. So that's, that's something I really love about this, this small size. So you put this in a, in a project and you can quickly 3D print something and, and it's still really self-contained and tiny. Yeah. So uh, what software is running on the... Uh, that's Advanced MAME is, running, is what's running on the, the, there right now. So, and it, so I see Pac-Man right now running on there. So that's, <laughs> that's pretty yeah. cool. So you have, uh, so that's running on there. And poss of course the possibilities are endless. You're running Linux. So, you know, you can, you know, it's a full operating system. Their options are really uh, unlimited. And then this demo right here, there is a uh, infrared camera. Right, that's um, the FLIR Lipton 3 sensor. Um, we recently had a, a, a design contest with the, the BeagleBone Blue and, and the folks over at FLIR. Um, and out of that came some community software for, for reading the sensor on the, the BeagleBone. It was really easy to translate that to the Pocket Beagle. Now there is the Pocket Beagle, amazing. You can build everything with it. You can get the clickboards and just or microbus clickboards. I'm not sure exactly what's the proper name here, but you can get these, uh, solder them right on, or put a, like a female header and stick them on there. That's other option. 
uh, is there more to come around the Pocket Beagle in well, the future? Is this well, something you can share <laughs> with us or we shouldn't be talking about that today? I mean, I, I think that it's important for us to reach out and engage our community and work on that, some of that stuff together. There's already a couple of different add-on boards that have been developed uh, by the community for, for adding USB host and for adding um, 3G cellular modems uh, directly to the board so, so that they're on, on, on daughter boards. Already. That those are already, um, you know, so this is released like two, by the community. It's like right? two weeks. So they're not products, so they're, but they're community. Yeah, yeah, but the fact actually, that actually somebody... the USB host one is already being sold on Tindy, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in like a couple of weeks, there's already products. Exactly. There's already somewhat of an ecosystem around the pocket it, it, beagle. That's exactly. pretty cool. Exactly, and we're going to continue to work with the community to, um, you know, help them bring their ideas to, to life. Um, and of course, we're going to be working with with you guys directly on add-on boards uh, for for the Pocket Beagle. Um, I think we're going to try to do more and more with the um, open the, the open development style, right? Okay. So really keep it as as open and engaged with our community as possible. Exciting, exciting. I really can't wait to see what else comes around the Pocket Beagle. Uh, I personally, I. I'm truly in love with this board. It's it's truly an amazing $25 board that you really can do much it's with. Really, just $25? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, some distributors have it with free shipping at, uh, <laughs> or overnight shipping or something at $25, which is you know another amazing piece here. So I really can't wait to see more around the Pocket Beagle. I see. I think it was going to see a lot more. The value of of all that little things that can happen with the board being stripped down is actually positive, but we need more of the community engagement and more of the ecosystem to show the possibilities out there. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, maybe next time we'll have the, the actual, you know, yeah. we have actual demos with the click and other other things. Yeah, like, I know there's a page the already about the click modules and what, you know, the, the drivers and you were showing me, a, what is there's that a, There's a, on, in the, there's a Pocket Beagle Wiki. If you go to the, if you go to beagleboard.org slash pocket, um, and you follow some of the, the documentation links, you get to the, the wiki and the, on, on GitHub. Um, and there's a, a, a Microbus click page with some of the, the supporting software for using a number of the clickboards already, and that'll be growing um, greatly. Um, and over time, we'll start adding links to some of these, these, these other add-on boards that we still have to kind of define a, a name for, um, and some of the standards about whether you put connectors on top or on bottom. You just wanted to try to get some, yeah. some common usage out of them. Um, but um, yeah, I've already got the, some software for the, the 3G modems. I've already got been running that on my, my Pocket Beagle so I can SSH in anywhere nice. on the cellular network. And Ethernet, uh, somebody on our forum was talking about Ethernet yeah. and the... Uh... Yeah, there's, there's a, the, you can already buy the, the Click um, Ethernet modules. Um, there's a couple of different Click Ethernet modules that are already working with the Pocket Beagle today. Exciting. There's really no way this would not work for you. That's a good right? summary. That's a good summary. <laughs> but we'd like to we'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, please come back and share with us what you think. If you have built any projects, we'd love to hear see what uh, what you have built around the Pocket Beagle. And from our end, we're also working on all kind of exciting things that we want to share very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. Thanks. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye bye.